So today we are going to talk about how AI, artificial intelligence, also in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, also known as Jassasa, how artificial intelligence is targeting Muslims, and how Muslims have been targeted, and how uh, the think tanks um, in the West uh, have been targeting Muslims, and uh, what their think tanks have been talking about in terms of targeting Muslims. And so we're going to talk about this process today. It's very, very, very important to know this because you know Surah Al-Kahf is the surah that deals with Dijjal. And it is the surah that deals with the postmodern world that we live in today. And it is in this surah, as you will see, that I will come back to this verse. I'm going to show you actually this verse right now. This, the, the very first event, the very first Usually we say the word story, but it's actually an event. It's not just it's, it's this event that is an archetype event. It's an event that will occur again. The same type of event will occur again, where like the Ashabul Kahf people will be targeted, and they will their only way to survive will be to move out of the city, and so uh, and and so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says about them in the last part of this ayah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number, I think uh, uh, in, in ayah, let's see, um, ayah number 19, okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends when they, when they wake up from their sleep. That's how we woke them up, so they'll ask each other. So one of the people said amongst them, how much did you sleep? How much did we sleep? We slept today or part of a day. Allah knows how much you slept. Go with money. Now, what's interesting here, I'm not, this is not the subject, but it's interesting. The word used for money, those of you who know the Arabic language will be able to appreciate it and talk about this in the comment section, how this is so interesting. فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرَقِكُمْ Send one of you with waraq. Waraq is money, but waraq is paper. Waraq is paper. So the time where paper money will come, meaning the time where paper and money has come again. So they, the Sut al-Kahf uses the word waraqikum. Go with your paper, but the word waraq means money. Bi waraqikum hadihi ila al-Madina. Go to the city. But city is where they're ready to tyrannize you, suppress you, look for you, have surveillance on you, have information on you, where they can recognize you. So then they say, Fanzur, Fanzur, be careful, look. Fanzur, unzur means to look, to observe. Afala yanzuruna ila ibili kaifa khuliqa. Do you not see how we created the camel? Me unzur, look, observe. Unzur, ayuha azka ta'ama. Number one, ayuha azka, which is the more most pure food. Now the word azka is usually used in the Arabic language for smelling something. I'm not going to go into the details of this, but because you can't find pure food anymore. So it says, look, you know, they're, they're, even though they slept 300 years, they're worried about, okay, make sure our food is halal, it's pure. Because we will be living in a time where food will no longer be pure. In fact, it won't even be, uh, uh, you know, I wish um, I had one of these uh, things, but I don't. I wanted to actually show you what is food compared to what is not food. That's for another time, inshallah. You know, if I have an apple here, you'll say it's food. But if I have, let's say, a Doritos package, right? A package of Doritos, and you read all the 20 ingredients that are there. If you asked a person 100 years ago, is this food? He wouldn't recognize this as food. Is this really food? Like, at what point is food food? It's a very important question. You know, I remember there was a professor at Yale uh, who had a class on, you know, food science. And, and this was, I think, the first or second class. Anyway, 
Ayu has kata aman. Where where is this pure food? Make sure you get pure food. But the topic for today, fayatikum bi rizq minhu, and then you know you bring risk from there. Bring your pot. Fayatalatov. Today's topic. So be careful. Be careful, because they're out to get you. They're out to do surveillance on you, and they're gonna recognize you with your markers, as they're calling it in the think tanks. This might be something new for you guys. Marker, markers are, you know, you got your kufi on, that's a marker. You got your beard, that's another marker. You're maybe wearing a tobe, that's another marker. And if artificial intelligence is looking at you, well, the points are scoring up, you know. That's the person to look at, to really watch out for that person. And, فَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ فَانْزُرْ أَيُّهَا الْأَزْكَى تَعَامًا So, first thing, look at what is pure food. Make sure you're eating pure food because this food is mind-altering to, to subdue the people and the masses. That's another topic. Fluoride in our water is, is if, if there's, it's, it's made to make us dumber. أَيُّهَا الْأَزْكَى تَعَامًا فَلْيَأْتِكُمْ بِرِزْقٍ مِّنْهُ فَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ be careful. You see this? And be cautious. وَلَا يُشْعِرَنَّ بِكُمْ أَحَدًا Let not one of them find out who you are. Because if you look like, you know, a Muslim, and if your stuff is being monitored, and your likes and dislikes and your values, and you're going to Islamic websites, and you're listening to that sheikh or this sheikh, all that's being monitored, and we're going to talk about how to go around this. Because once you know this is the way, and Allah the, Allah mentions this in Surah Al-Kahf, because it can be subverted. Meaning you can go around this, you can dodge this. You don't have to do everything under your name. You can create another email. You can create a, you know. Anyway. So, وَلَا يُشْعِرَنَّ بِكُمْ أَحَدًا Now, what are the think tanks doing? Now, let's go to that. So this is a uh, Rand Corporation over here. Let me move this so you can understand this. This is uh, Objective Analysis Effective Solutions by Rand Corporation. Rand Corporation is a think tank, uh, and they have written a very important book. I think like almost like ten years ago now, but very few people know about this called Civil Democratic Islam looking for strategic partners and what are what is our objectives what is our plan with the muslims and what should we do with the muslim world and this is the book this is the bible on how they are dealing with the muslims okay so what i'm about to show you is extremely important but now that they identify what they want to do it has to be incorporated into the the ai the artificial intelligence world okay so we're going to look at this now, and uh, let me make this bigger, and let me make this bigger. I want you to read uh, the first paragraph here. Let me make it bigger so it's even easier for you to read. Okay, bismillah. Okay. There is no question that contemporary Islam is in a volatile state, engaged in internal and external struggle over its values, its identity, and its place in the world. Meaning, he, the author is saying, his name is Bernard, Islam is in a, in a fight of, in itself. We're internally fighting itself, externally fighting itself. We're trying to find out who we are. And so, therefore, rival versions are contending for spiritual and political domination. Dominance. This conflict has serious costs and economic, social, political, and security implications for the rest of the world. Consequently, the West is making an increased effort to come to terms with, to understand, to influence the outcome of this struggle. Okay? So, what have they done? They have divided the Muslims, okay, into these groups. Let me move myself here. Okay. <clears throat> Fundamentalists are 
traditionalists, meaning people who believe in traditional Islam, but they are interested in not, okay, so the traditionalists, you can see the general ulama, their attitude has been what? Is that, okay, look, Islam is under the threat, and I need to explain this for two minutes. Islam is under the threat. This happened during the times of colonialism. Islam is under the tr threat. We need to save our iman, and therefore we need to remove ourselves from the modern world. We need to remove ourselves from the impact of the modern world, and we need to go back and separate ourselves from modernity, this modernity that has come as an onslaught to the Muslim world. And so that there the that was the stance and their response was the Ashab al Kahf response of the ulama. The fundamentalists are those who agree with the values of, of the ulama, but they want Islam in the world. They want to they want to bring Islam to the global world. They want to show Islam to the global world. So fundamentalists reject democratic values in contemporary Western Western um, culture. They want an authoritarian, this is just their own definitions, they're such foolish people. Anyway, they want an authoritarian puritanical state that will implement their extreme view of Islamic law and morality. They're willing to see use innovation and modern technology to achieve this goal. These are the Muslims who want, who, who are like the traditionalists, but they want Islam to be in society. They want the economic, social, political system be according to Islam. As I talked about in my last talk, you know, they don't have any problem with you practicing Islam in, 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 in Islam as a mazhab or Islam as a religion, as an individual thing. You're doing your individual purification, you're building your masjids, even your community thing. But the minute you try to bring Islam into the public domain, the minute you start talking about Islamic economics, the minute you start talking about Islam and sociology, the minute you start talking about Islamic law, Sharia, the minute you start talking about Islam and, 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 and the political system, that's where you've crossed the red line. Because they don't want Islam to compete against the, uh, the only solution that they're giving to the world, which is basically democracy and capitalism. So fundamentalists are basically those people who believe in the fundamentals of the deen just as the traditionalists, except they want to also express Islam in the global village. They want to express Islam not as an expansionist state, but you know, this is the problem that, oh, they, they, they have, they have, you know, um, they have added this definition that's incorrect, that Muslims want an expansionist state. It's it's not that. We just want to live as Muslims. You know? Traditionalists want a conservative society. They're suspicious of modernity, innovation, and change. Modernists and secularists. Okay? So then he goes to say, Fundamentalists are hostile to the West. It's not that they're hostile to the West. I'm a fundamentalist. But this, uh, fundamentalist doesn't also mean terrorism. That's another issue I'll talk about. You know, how terrorism just is a manufactured thing just to get their own goals accomplished. You know, it's, it's manufactured terrorism. Fundamentalists are hostile to the West to you, not to us. We're not, fun we're not hostile to the West. Anyway are hostile to the West in, in, in particular and are intent to varying degrees on damaging, destroying democratic modernity. Not true. We just want Islam to be expressed in the social domain. That's all. Then you have the modernists, okay, and the secularists. Now, you think this is, in, you'll find this to be interesting, okay? So, support the modernists first. Publish and distribute their works at subsidized cost. This is what they're saying. Encourage them to write for mass audiences and for youth. Introduce their views into the curriculum of Islamic education. Give them a public platform on TV and so on and so forth. Make your opinions and judgments on fundamental questions of religious interpretation available to mass audience in comparison with those of the fundamentalists and traditionalists. 
who have websites, publishing houses, schools, institutions, and many other vehicles for disseminating their views. Position secularism and modernism as a counterculture. Support the modernists first. Then what? You can get this yourself and read the whole paper. Support the traditionalists against the fundamentalists. Get the ulama group, which they have done very well in Saudi Arabia. You know, the, 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 they put Sayyid Qutb and his group, Sheikh Safar Hawali and Sheikh Suleiman Auda, and, and just the ulama fighting against the other, according to this agenda. Support the traditionalists against the fundamentalist. Publicize traditionalist criticism of the fundamentalist violence and extremism. Encourage this. And, and you know, you want to take those who want to do iqamat al-deen, those who want to establish the deen, and the terrorists, and put them as one group. Whereas they're not one group. They're not one group at all. Discourage alliances between traditionalists and fundamentalists. And mine is the opposite. We need to encourage the alliance between the traditionalists, the ulama, and those who want Islam expressed in the public sphere. It has to be done. Encourage the cooperation between modernists and the traditionalists who are closer to the modernist end of the spectrum. Where appropriate education and traditionalists to, uh, where appropriate, educate the traditionalists to equip them better for debates against fundamentalists. And you get the idea. I'm not going to read the whole list. And this is nothing. What I'm going to show you is worse, what's coming. Confront and oppose the fundamentalists. Selectively support secularists. So that's their basic plan. Okay, This is the summary of this. I, I didn't get the whole file because it would be too many pages to go over. Okay. So now, what do they do and how does this relate to artificial intelligence? So let's see what we got here. So this is what they are now doing. They have these marker issues. And they've divided us into these groups. You see radical fundamentalists, scriptural fundamentalists, conservative traditionalists, and then the less conservative, which you'll see over here on this page, reformist traditionalists, modernists, mainstream secularists, ra radical secularists. Okay? So they've divided Muslims into this group, and then they have the marker issues. What does this person think about democracy? Well, if he wrote about that opinion on the internet at some point, they got it. Human rights, polygamy, hijab, right? They uh, is, Islamic criminal code, is it... Uh, you know, cutting off the hands, it's like so vicious, right? Killing someone because they did adultery, too vicious, you know. And they can tell by the websites you go to what your values are. Which sheikh you're listening to will tell you what your values are. And so here's their response. What do the modernists think? What do the secularists think? What do the reformist traditionalists think? What do the fundamentalists think? According to them. So what do you think about hijab? What do you think about beating a wife? What do you think about the status of minorities? What do you think about khilaf or the Islamic State? And all you have to do is, now that you've done this, and you have now further divided how these different people behave, how they're going to behave on the internet, how they behave in their dress, because you can now use the surveillance cameras and everything. And so now you have AI, artificial intelligence, targeting Muslims. And this is already happening. I'm going to talk about this in a second. So, let me just move this again. Uh, again, those who want to read this, and you, you should, Civil Democratic Islam Partners, Resources and Strategies, it's the Rand Corporation. We're going to look at another uh, think tank today in, in a little bit after I talk about a few more things. Now listen to this. If you only knew the level of detail that's being recorded about your daily activities <coughs> in life and movement about your city, your country, the world, 
if you could understand the level of control that is being created through AI to manage us, the human resources of this world, you just might change the way you think about technology today and your interactions with it and with AI. There is a system in China that is already active and watching the citizens there, waiting to be brought online as the official active control grid to monitor their every move, activity, action, and thought process. The futuristic movie starring Tom Cruise, The Minority Report, depicted such a scenario where the citizenry are subject to arrest based on their very thoughts by an elite law enforcement squad known only as the pre-crime unit. In the movie they used three gifted humans called precogs with special powers to see into the future and predict crimes beforehand. In the real world that gifted entity is better known as AI. AI's predictions of what you just might do next is fast becoming our reality and no one even seems to notice or so, understand that it is happening right in front of our eyes. So how will they predict what's happening next? What you will do next? They have that much information. They know what you look like, what you dress, what you dress, what it means, what you like, what you're thinking, what websites you're going to. They can predict what you're going to do next. And so how, what's the only way to save yourself your only way to save yourself is to get off the grid is to go outside the city and to only go into the city when you have to and when you have to even then you have to be careful eyes oh they see it in advertising but they think that it's only purpose that that's its only purpose it's just for advertising but no one in the captured populace seems to understand its true purpose and that purpose is to completely control all of humanity. Well, Saudi Arabia just granted citizenship to a robot named Sophia. Now on the surface it sounds benign, but what lies beneath is what you need to really be focusing upon. Underneath that facade that is Sophia lurks the real threat, and that threat is artificial intelligence. Or as Max Egan has suggested, autonomous intelligence. That intelligence is a computer program that is not exactly cognizant in the manner that it would possess a soul and therefore the capacity for compassion, but rather a self-aware <coughs> software program who only relies on pure logic to make its decisions. A logic that lacks the ability to consider the human condition of compassion for one another and therefore is only capable of making cold and calculated decisions based solely on logic alone. So you guys get the point, right? You have to be in a situation where you're outside the city and when you go, you know, uh, when you go to the city with paper money, you better be careful. You gotta get ready to go outside because a new world is coming where Muslims and Muslims who want Islam, who want to live Islam, who want to express Islam, who want self-determination for Islam, who want an Islamic civilization, they're going to be targeted. And the way they're going to be targeted, it's pretty clear in the Hadith also, by the way. This whole terrorism, 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 terrorism nonsense is going to continue till the end. And so it is very, very important that Muslims need to start thinking about how they are going to be outside the city. And they only go inside the city and very carefully go inside the city when they only have to, have to, really have to. U.S. setting up facial recognition at every major airport without proper vetting. This just got, this just started, by the way, just started under Trump. And Trump has recently done more things regarding Israel, which is making the whole Aqsa thing uh, even more uh, scary. 
I don't want to show more videos because time has already gone up, but I have to make a few more and points. Big data mixed with the ever increasing power of artificial intelligence means all of our actions are being recorded and stored like never before. This information is being mined to identify social media trends for targeted advertising, but it's also being used to predict riots, election outcomes, disease epidemics, and that's not to mention the vast networks of surveillance cameras that could be used to track crowds and individuals in real time. This is Embers, a computer forecasting system that sifts through the data that you post on social media. You guys get the point. Please do like, comment, subscribe, share. Let's get smarter together. You know, let's get smarter together. We Muslims need to share and get, we need to share and do what one of the sociologists called webbing. We need to connect with each other um, and make each other smarter and, and, and to start taking action. And you know, usually you'll notice that I do one video that has either to do with Islamic eschatology, signs of the end of times, the political situation, the Muslims, or uh, talking about one of the aspects of the world today that really hurts Islam. And then one of my other videos would be about Islam in general that, to increase our Iman, because you need both. You need to be aware of what's happening in the world, but then you also need to increase your Iman so that you then have the ability to take the actions that we need to take. Uh, doubt is one of the new, new spiritual problems is doubt. We doubt. And for many reasons, which I'm not going to go into right now. Well, let's see how long it uh, takes you to find me. Thank you very much. Let's go. Again, you know, it's going to the point of facial recognition and every aspect of your behavior is being monitored. And this is why, again, I want to remind the people that watched that video of mine, try not to use Google, try to use DuckDuckGo because it's just as good and it doesn't have the advertisements and you're not being tracked. This I just wanted to share with you that uh, recently Brookings Institute had a conversation Allen. about uh, artificial intelligence in China because China has the largest investment. China is in one city in China alone is investing more than all of Europe. Okay, so and they have a very different business model. It's very centralized and and institution, and it is truly my honor. Uh, today's debate is the first major collaboration in a new partnership between at the Sykes Foreign Policy Institute and on the leader of the Communist Party as the Chinese issues that seem to show incompatibility so you get the point so I want to end here by saying that it's very very important to understand how the gel is going to use artificial intelligence just Sasa and is going to use what has already been identified as fundamentalist Muslims traditionalist Muslims right and uh, and figured out what they look like, how they behave, what they think, or what they think they think, you know, uh, and, uh, and is what will be the result of this? When you bring artificial intelligence with the, this type of research together, who is going to be targeted? Muslims are going to be targeted, and this is what I'm talking about. And Muslims are already being targeted, you know, and so... Uh, this is going to, but the thing is, this is going to intensify that once Israel and Jerusalem come on top. Now, you should be aware of what's happening right now in Al-Aqsa. I'm not going to go into that today. But as as things intensify uh, and Israel becomes stronger and more independent and starts taking, today they also mentioned 
you know, let's give the Golan Heights back to Israel. Uh, the U.S., it came from the U.S., but as Israel becomes stronger and, uh, and as the U.S. begins its decline, uh, you're going to see this technology really targeting Muslims. You know, if, if anyone thought America is bad, if anyone thought America is making it difficult for Muslims, you have no idea, no idea what's going to be coming in the upcoming years for the Muslims. And so we have to be ready too. They're not gods. They're human beings like us. And we're, we do, they don't have special horns on their heads that makes them extra smart. They're not more smarter than me and you. We just have to do certain things according to the Quran and according to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, one of which is to start collaborating. Like-minded people have to start collaborating. And one of the ways to do that, you know, is to, um, you know, subscribe and to like and to share. Uh, like, comment, subscribe and share. So that the ideas, they go far and far, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us all the time. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa